Welcome AP Physics students. We're going to talk a little bit about how to process your data for the RC Circuits Lab. Um, and that's uh, going to involve really two phases. There's two different experiments. One is charging the capacitor. The other one is discharging the capacitor. Uh, and processing your data gets a little bit involved because what you're always trying to produce, if you recall, is a linear graph where the slope of that linear graph means something. So in this case, the slope of the linear graph, linearized graph, is going to be uh, related to your time constant, which if you recall, the time constant is RC. Okay, so whatever resistance times capacitance is, that right there is going to be your time constant. And that's what you're trying to figure out. Now you might know one of the resistances, you might know a capacitance, um, okay, you probably won't know both, uh, or maybe you'll know neither, and it doesn't especially matter. But regardless, what you're gonna, the data you're gonna gather is gonna involve time and potential. So you'll, you know, start your recording, close the switch, and then you gather some data that looks kind of like this. Now I don't know what, how many hertz you're gonna use. I don't know how long it's gonna take for you to collect your data, but it is gonna go kind of like this, if you recall. When you're charging. This is charging data. Potential, of course, starts at zero, climbs pretty rapidly, but that rate of increase starts to sort of taper off until eventually it hits more or less a constant value. Um, in this case, the value of the battery that you're using is probably going to be 1.5 volts-ish, but make sure you carefully measure that because, as you're going to see in a little bit, you need to know the actual EMF of your battery. All right, now, to understand how you're going to linearize this, we need to look a little bit at the equations that govern charging and discharging. All right, so this one right here should look familiar, right? You've got voltage of the capacitor as a function of times related to the EMF of the battery, and then here's your time constant appearing up here. Now, what we want to happen, excuse me, what we want to have happen is we want uh, a, we want a linear graph where RC is going to be related to the slope and then hopefully we end up with like a straight line. This is not going to come out as a straight line if you recall. It's going to come out as uh, a natural growth curve which goes something like what my mouse just did, right? Starts off fast, tapers off, slows down, which is what we saw. Now, be, the reason it comes out so curvy, of course, is because of this E right here. And so that's the thing that we need to go away. So you should be thinking right now, how do I make a E go away? What do I do with that? If you thought to yourself, natural log function, then you're correct. Now, we've got a little ways to go before we can actually take a natural log. And this is some algebra that I would expect you to do in the theory section of your lab. Okay, so don't like just do this and not understand it or just cut to the final result that you're going to see in a minute and not worry about where it comes from. You need to actually understand where it comes from because I'm going to want to see it in the theory section of the lab and because the AP is going to expect to see it if they give you a lab-based question or RC circuits. All right, so in order to get it to a point where I can actually take a natural log of both sides, I need to have one side just be E to the something. Okay, so here goes. I divided both sides by the EMF. All right, well next we need to bring that one over and also the negative sign. So there's that. If you need to pause the video to follow the algebra at any point, go for it. But, you know, brought the one over, multiplied both sides by negative one. All right, now I can, well, almost take a natural log. I'm gonna rearrange the left side a little bit and make it look, there we go, a little bit nicer, right? Made that one into an EMF over EMF combined, you know, with a common denominator. Okay, now we'll take a natural log. Great, that right there actually could be turned into a linear graph. Now, if you're thinking to yourself, how could that be a linear graph still? I've got like a natural log or something like that. Remember, the trick with linearizing a graph was that you needed to make, uh, say, one side be, I don't know, for example, like, if you were looking at uh, a falling object, position versus time, you'd make one axis be time squared because the position varies by the square of the time. 
So in this case, I'm going to have one of my axes, my x-axis, just be time. Now, what is my other axis going to be? Think for a moment to yourself. If you said the whole left side of that equation, you would be correct. Your y-axis would be natural log of all this junk right here. The x-axis is just time. And that would make the slope everything left over here that's not time. So that the negative 1 over rc. All right, now this right here is maybe not always the way that everyone's going to do it. There's a lot of different ways that you can actually linearize it. So here's a different way of linearizing it. Um, I've got natural log of something over something else. Using my log rules, I can turn that into natural log of this thing minus natural log of what was on the bottom. Okay, and then I'll bring this over to the other side. And that means that my y-axis would now just be this part. My x-axis will be time. My slope will still be negative 1 over rc. The only difference now is going to be that I have a y-intercept. All right, but that's nothing to you, right? You don't need to really worry about making the y-intercept be something. That's just what it's going to be. So the simpler way of getting your calculations done, uh, if you don't mind not having a y-intercept of 0, um, which is actually not an inconvenience at all, uh, is you're going to have uh, the y-axis being natural log of whatever your EMF is minus whatever the voltage happens to be at some particular moment in time. Okay, so let's get started on doing that with my made-up fake data over here. Here's my potential. Here's my EMF that I carefully recorded, right, using my voltmeter, touched it to either terminal of the battery. Actually, I just made it up, but whatever. Um, I'm going to make one column here be um, EMF minus potential. All right, and then I'm going to use my, uh, I'm going to use Excel to make my life easier. So we'll make a function there, equals, all right, uh, my EMF is 1.49, so I would put equals 1.49 minus potential. And then we can just drag this down. Oh, the wonders of modern technology. Go, go, there. And there, there we have it. All right, and now we want natural log of EMF minus, I just put B this time. Really, I should have just called it B here. Not to be lazy, but all right. So equals, Excel does have a natural log function. There it is. Drag it down. All right. And now we just need to make a graph of this versus time. Let's see, insert, uh, no, hold on. charts, there we go, that's where it is on a Mac. Scatter plot, we want a marked scatter. Oh, there we go. All right, that's pretty good looking. Uh, and now we could go through and do things like insert a trend line, and what we would discover is the trend line equals, uh, or the slope of it equals negative, um, 1 over RC. Okay, great, wonderful. Uh, and the only thing that I would point out here is if you look at the end here, um, see, like this part, that's all nice and linear, but near the end where your voltmeter starts sort of not being able to tell the difference between two voltage values, you actually have to kind of trim out some of your data. Uh, some of you uh, will let it run for really long. You'll let it get all the way up until the voltmeter is reading 1.49. And then you'll get these massive, like, steps like that. It'll go for a long ways. And so what you actually are going to want to do is trim out once it gets to the flat there, right? Once you start seeing, like, two or three values in a row, you want to actually delete that. Uh, so let's see. Here's more or less where that starts happening is around, like, 0.06. So I'll, uh, I'll delete that data, or you could just change the range over which the graph is being made. 
And let's see now. Oh, see, that looks so much more like a, a line because it doesn't have those shelves there at the end. Okay, all right, now, it's not perfect data, right? It doesn't actually form a perfectly straight line, but it's pretty well linearized. All right, now, let me show you what happens if you don't measure the EMF of your battery very well. If you didn't carefully measure it, here's what would happen. I don't know, if you're like, oh, Mr. Jericho said it was 1.5. I'll just use 1.5. Oh, nothing. Uh, I'm sorry, something is... Oh, that's right, because huh, I didn't actually put that in as a formula. Sorry, if I uh, instead made this be... I have to actually drag down my formula now. Let's make it be 1.5, because I was a sloppy slacker here. Let's go back and look at that graph. Can't really tell the difference. It's going to be less linear. If I'm uh, if I'm um, messy with it and I make this be 1.6 even, then it can get quite off. Oh, look how not straight that is. All right, so if you said my battery's 1.5 and you didn't actually measure it, and really it was old and it was giving you 1.3 volts, and that was your actual EMF, then your data is not going to look like a straight line. So actually, please measure the EMF of your battery and use the real value for it, not the, yeah, you know, like 1.5, uh, like we'll say a typical AA battery is. All right, let's fix all that right there. Good. All right, now let's look at discharging. Um, discharging, the potential is going to go the other way, right? It's going to be an exponential decay function. So here's my values here. Let's just cut right to the chase. What do I need to do to linearize this thing? I'm going to have to look at my discharging equations. Oh, here they are on the next page. Oh, my goodness. I have to delete things. All right, now, um, in order to get this to a point where we can uh, take a natural log so that we can linearize it, we'll divide both sides by V naught. All right, there it is. Uh, now I can take a natural log of both sides. Okay, so now I've just got the negative T over RC. This is pretty much the way you want it. Um, although, again, like, if you did it like this, it'd be fine. You'd have a y-intercept of zero, uh, and that's what your y-axis would be, is potential over whatever the initial potential was. Not the EMF of the battery, necessarily, right? You may not have let it charge all the way to EMF. Maybe it stopped at 1.47, like I did with my data. All right, in which case, this would be 1.47 down there. Okay, fine. All that stuff should be okay. The better way to do it, I would say, is to take it to this point, where, like, literally all you have to do is take the natural log of whatever the voltmeter was reading, and then the y-intercept is going to be the natural log of whatever the initial voltage reading was. And then the slope's going to be negative 1 over RC. All right, so there you can see what the axes are going to be for um, that linearized graph. All right, let's do that real quick. I'll pause because it's the same process. Well, whatever. Uh, we have natural log of V. So equals natural log of that thing drag. All right, now we need a graph. Oh, oh, I'm just getting the wrong button. Graph. Okay. Uh, and once again, you can see it's got that like nasty stuff there at the end, which you can go ahead and delete and you'll have a much nicer graph where again, it's linearized. The slope is going to be negative one over RC. All right, I hope that was helpful uh, in terms of getting you started on processing your data. Please, if you have questions, don't hesitate to come in and see me. I would love to help you through the entire process. Uh, and remember, you're going to have to do all that math in your theory section and know how to do it because the AP will probably also ask about it too at some point when you get an RC circuits question. All right, thanks.